Hello everyone and welcome to Masterclass. I'm John Tanalia. Today you'll be listening to a lovely young soprano, Deborah Cotterall. Her panelists are Barbara Deborah, Helen Hughes Ralston, George Hogan, Sandy Schneller, and Lisa Hara DeCalvo. Please sit back and enjoy the live singing. Welcome everyone, and we're in for a treat today because I just heard the rehearsal. Okay, Deborah, what would you like to sing for us today? Uh, first, I'll be singing A Fuji a Cloudy Floor from Don Giovanni by Mozart. Very good. George Hogan, please. Gosh, yeah. Well, listen, I've sung this already a lot, so uh, I think I can really no, help you. I still can't hear you, George. Hold on. Oh, wait. Let me unmute the uh, TV. What help? Okay. You've got, you missed my whole funny line there. <laughs> anyway, well, uh, listen, first of all, beautiful voice, and, and I commend you with your, uh, with your life and, uh, and, and using this year to get back to singing. I think that's, that's tremendous, and I want to encourage you to continue to do that. Don't, don't quit. Um, that being said, uh, some really wonderful things going on in your voice, I think, too. This, this aria, not an easy aria, and oftentimes many sopranos, at least that I sang with uh, when I was doing a leper, uh, would get a bit throaty on this one. And, and I love your timbre. Uh, the only thing I would say uh, with the technique right now, and especially working back into it, is finding the strength in the rib cage again. I, I find the sternum is kind of deflating on you a bit. I'm, I'm not an advocate of holding it up. But at the same time, I mean, you want to you want to have that connection here, you know, on the hard palate and up here. And I think up here is good. At times, this wants to kind of sag on you. Um, the vowels, uh, I, I like your open. Uh, your your food G is is good, uh, and um, I think uh, the Italian probably could you could use a, a little bit more refinement on the Italian, if you know what I mean. I think. Uh, Getting, getting all those vowels lined up through this aria uh, imperative. I, I think you have a, a great sense of character in what's going on here. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, um, you know, you're trying to forewarn another, uh, another young lady. So um, I think I'll pass it on to my colleagues uh, that uh, probably have some other things to say as well. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. I enjoyed it. Okay. Let's uh, go to Barbara since you're right next to Jordan. Hey, hi Deborah. Hi Barbara. <laughs> I'm so excited to hear you sing again. Thank you. I, I don't even want to think about how long it's been, but you've had a rich and full life since I have heard you sing. Um, in your young years, you're just still maturing vocally and it sounds beautiful. Beautiful. Um, what I want to say to you is everything that George said, plus a couple of things. So. Uh, I noticed as you got towards the end, you really got into your singer's self. You know, at the beginning, it's, you know, first outing and, you know, the nerves and all of that. Um, and I noticed with your hands, you were kind of not acting as much as you were just kind of getting yourself into your singer body. And that's something that we all know is, is so important to, to practice, to discipline as you're preparing, if you're going to step out and do some auditions once you get your package ready, um, you want to just really practice the discipline of when it's time, 
the snap comes and you turn into that singer body, singer mind, singer personality, you know, no matter what. And, and I know you can do that. I saw you do it in the past um, with some pretty, uh, pretty good, sharp, positive uh, motivation there. Um, I would say, um, you know, if we, were, if we were working together, I'd say, come on, let's just really, really line up the legato, even though the piece is da 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 you know, that sort of long line of, and I shouldn't be trying to even sing it, but I'm just trying to say, trust that line of vocalism that um, you found it a little more towards the end. And if you can plan that in your vocalizing and in your in your singing and almost everything, you'll you'll step up a level in what we hear as more polished and elegant sound. Fuji is one of the hardest things I think. Um, you know, I remember hearing Aida sing Fuji uh, so many times, and uh, Leonora in uh, Trovatore, Fuji, a ah, Fuji, Fuji, and I always uh, admired how different sopranos, you know, handled that that word with not really interrupting the vocal sound, but getting the double G, the the stopped sound, slightly with the back voice continuing. So I'd encourage you to experiment a little bit with uh, a coach or a teacher and see if you can find your own style of, of keeping the voice going, but still having that direction of the n -j, n -j, n -j, you know, that it's a forward direction and not an implosive uh, direction. I love your voice. I love what you're doing. Can't wait to hear you some more. Thank I'll you. I'll pass it over to another colleague. Okay. Let's... Uh... Let's go back down to home, please, right on me, Barbara. Okay. Hi there. Hi, Deborah. Um, beautiful. Um, enjoyed your, your singing very much. I think uh, Don Elvira is one of the most difficult and roles to sing, actually. Um, she doesn't get to be the star. <laughs> um, but she has two really difficult arias to sing, and this is one of them. Uh, the difficulty of this difficulty of this aria in particular is the beginning because it just sort of comes out of nowhere. Um, now, if you were in the production, you would have sung some other things before this, so you'd be a little more into your body, more warmed up. So everything that Barbara was saying, and I think George was also saying, is is sort of you need to be in your body before you start to sing the aria. So that means while the accompanist is playing that little tiny bit of intro that you get, you you have to be like ready physically to come in um, before that he, you know, before you do come in. Um, so, but overall, uh, really a beautiful performance. I loved your runs. They were very clean, lovely, stayed full and opulent all the way up and down, which I really admire. Um, I would say also because of, this kind of goes into what Barbara was saying, because this particular aria is also, it's really very short, in a way, you have to think of it as one great big long line, like a macro rhythm. So what I like to do with pieces like that is, is actually draw arrows in my music. I'm going from here to here to here to here, kind of, so that I have that sense of forward direction the whole time that I'm singing the piece, so that you don't get bogged down with the jumping around that that vocal line does. So you're always thinking in a way your mind is taking you forward because music happens in time. So you're singing into the future. Right? <laughs> um, and my other little comment, which also kind of plays into what Barbara was talking about with the Fuji, is one of the tricks that I try to use is to keep my breath moving through those double consonants or any consonant but especially the double consonants in Italian. And it does take a, a quite a bit of practice to get that, but to, you have to sing the consonants as well as the vowels. Your voice is sustaining on the vowels, but you're keeping that breath pressure even and continuing to move through your consonants as well. Um, so that's something else that you could think about as you continue to practice and, and work forward in, your, in whatever direction you want to take your singing career. You have a lovely voice. So I'm looking forward to hearing your next piece. Thank you. So that's, that's, that's my contribution for today, <laughs> for this piece. Thank you, Helen. Let's go below me to Sandra. 
as he takes a sip of his coffee. <laughs> Sandra, would you unmute and uh, join our conversation? Excellent, excellent. Um, first of all, you do have a beautiful voice, um, and I didn't hear anything that is really like in a bad habit yet or anything that can't be corrected with not that much uh, correction. Uh, I would like to expand on a little bit what Mr. Hogan and Ms. Dever were talking about with the line of legato. Um, and first of all, one of the things that's going on with your breath a little bit is that you're slightly, um, uh, John, you'll have to correct my pronunciation if I say this wrong, but slightly scoopad. So, <laughs> so your, your shoulders are a little bit forward and so is your head slumped a little bit back. And what that does is it, put, it puts strain on your body and where you can't get enough air in and then your body's fighting that air, okay? So if you have the, if you can like picture this, that you have like a string or something attached to the crown of your head and it's pulling you back on like a 45 degree angle. So it's pulling you up, but also backwards, not tilting your head back certainly, but kind of up and back, you'll find that if, even if you take a, a breath in now, that you, it'll feel deeper and you can feel wider. Your ribs will expand a little bit and that might be able to help you. And then as far as the line of legato goes, some of the consonants that are on the, the upper notes, the higher notes are stopping or impeding the flow of air to those notes slightly, okay? So what you, and there are ways to overcome that, but ideally what you wanna feel is that you're starting the upper notes at the very end of the note right before it. So it's actually the note that's right before it is very critical. It's not, if you do that correctly, the high note will just, it'll just pop right out. And um, I find that that's the difference. If you ever hear an, uh, an, an Italy born Italian speaking, somebody that's native to Italy speaking, even if you have somebody else that's not native to Italy, they can speak very, very well. But when you hear the Italians speak from Italy, there's like a certain pop to the sound that you hear. Um, I don't know if I'm describing that right, but there's like a certain rhythm to it. And it's almost like a pop that you'll hear occasionally in that, that you don't hear when somebody else is doing that when it's not native to them. And that has to do with how they're pronouncing the consonants that appear in words before the vowels. Because remember, you always sing the vowel you're not singing the consonants, okay? You need consonants because if you're just saying vowels, it wouldn't make any sense. It would just be gibberish. So you need the consonants, but they do get in the way of impeding air. So one of the things in this particular aria, which is very difficult, it's deceptively difficult, so I congratulate you on that, um, is that when you were doing the CH sound, the ch before you jumped up, that that, ch was giving you a little bit of a pause in the airflow before you got to the upper note, okay? Um, so there are ways to overcome that and it's not that big of a deal. And, um, but congratulations, um, I didn't hear you, that you have not really done any damage to your voice. Um, it has not been abused and it was a very vocally healthy sound in general, I thought. Thank so you. So congratulations on that. It was a pleasure listening to you today. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Okay, Lisa. Okay, I have, I have unmuted. Hello, Deborah. that was lovely. Thank you so much for sharing your gift with us. And it's great to hear that you're, that I didn't, I didn't know your history. Apparently you're getting back into singing, which is wonderful. I think that's great. And I agree, I don't know who said, it. I think Helen said what a great role this is. And this is a really great aria to sing. Um, you, I don't know if you know, um, everybody else here is more like a voice teacher and I'm actually a coach. Okay. So um, all of my comments are really coachy comments but I always try to build on what my colleagues have said so it's nice that I, they all went first <laughs> so I can build on what they said um so 
I, I actually got the, the music out because when I've coached this in the past, one of the hardest things about this piece is getting the rhythms right, all, all of the rhythms correct. So what I would suggest is that you t go back through, I think you did a great job. It's very, it's rhythmic, it's very rhythmic, but be careful that there's the difference between the dotted, 16th, dotted eighth and 16th, and then the dotted quarter and the eighth. It happens all the way throughout the piece. And what will help is when we, uh, several of my colleagues talked about legato, getting those rhythms really precise will actually help the legato. For instance, I, and um, it's like it's uh, non lo lasciare più dir. That's the rhythm. Il uh, tor da da. Okay, so just look at those rhythms because I mean it was really crisp and great, but I think some of them weren't exactly perfect. Um, and the um, building on what Dr. Schneller just said um, about uh, vowels, and several other people have mentioned the vowels. I would love to hear really a lot of clarity in your vowels. What I got, and a lot of people do this, like a word, there's a really hard word in here. It doesn't seem like a hard word, but lashar is actually a hard word because the accent is on the second syllable and people who maybe don't have a lot of facility in Italian or not Italian tend to say lashar instead of lashar. So I want you to just be careful of little words like that, that you're really being clear on all of those vowels that they're very clean and clear. I think that was the word. I, I, I didn't actually write it down while you were singing, I'm sorry. And then I did all the comments about the double consonants. I'm not even gonna talk about that because my colleagues all did. And the, um, the other thing that what will help when you, um, George brought up your rib cage and making sure that you're really able to use your rib cage for your support system. My next comment is gonna be helped by that. Um, you can't breathe in the middle of Falachi even if it's at the end of a really long, hard run. You have to do That's the phrase. So I, I understand why you breathe because it's really hard. And I agree that someone mentioned, I think it was Helen mentioned, you have really, the color tour was fabulous, really fabulous. Just, but work on your, your breathing technique so that you can do that whole phrase without having to breathe in the middle of a word. But I think you did a fabulous job and it's really great to hear you. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Okay, one thing I have to say for, about Mozart is I, you know, a lot of teachers in these universities give Mozart to young singers. Mm -hmm. And to be honest with you, I think that Mozart is probably one of the most difficult things to sing. And I get into arguments all the time. And to be honest with you, me and Mozart, uh, <laughs> especially if I haven't been singing for a while, which I have, if I would go jump into one of these things, my recommendation and my only recommendation is to start, and I know you probably have history with this already, mm -hmm. start with some of the most more uh, fluid things like Bellini or Donizetti, or uh, because Mozart, you know, he is the master. Uh, uh, and I, I say this with, with all my art, and I, I, I really do. Some people believe in this, some people, I just, and again, opinions are like rear ends, everybody has one. <laughs> and this is mine. I think that Mozart is so difficult when we haven't been. Uh, at the top of our game, mm -hmm. because it's so exposed and so honest that if, if you hear everything, okay, that would be my only critique to, in this, because I love it, I, I am a fan, I love your voice, I think that you have a wonderful, rich voice with uh, so much potential that it, it's, it, it's, it really, uh, I think, has the, the potential to be a first-rate instrument, really. Thank you. And that's, I don't say that all. Um, secondly, um, uh, and I agree with everybody, what everybody said, the, uh, I just think that um, when we don't sing every day, we get used to a certain physical state. Mm -hmm. And that has a lot to do with it. And I think that, that once you know you get this expanded, I always say because I am think fat. So <laughs> I think that thinking that broad, you know, uh, uh, wide in the in the, in the rib cage, like, like George said and, and Barbara said, is very great advice. Um, I think that we should ask her to sing something else. What would you like to see for us? I believe, we'll, we'll tell us what you have prepared. I, and then uh, what we'll do is we'll go back and let's see what you have. And everybody will let me just see if I can get everybody. Uh, so I brought two pieces. Uh, one is Sure on the Shiny Night by Barber, which I worked on in college. Some people have mentioned that I am getting sort of back into the game. Um, I'm a music therapist, so I sort of left singing went and got my master's. I've been in practice now for seven years, have small kids. 
and I'm trying to get back into singing. So one thing I've never actually been coached on, but I sing all the time in church is uh, my Ave Maria. So I also brought that as well, but okay. I can't decide. I'll, I'll leave it to the panel. <laughs> what would everybody say here? So we have a consensus of what everybody would like to hear? John, she glitched at least on my end uh, with her uh, second choice there. Okay, if I, she has a short and the shiny neck from Barbara, and she has the Ave Maria. Which, which, which Ave, Ave Maria. Maria? Yes, thank you. Yeah. Schubert. Schubert. I would go for sure on this shiny, shining night. Well, I would like to hear the Ave Maria because I'd like to hear how you're singing, how you've been singing now. That's true. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. And then maybe we'd be able to give you a little more, like like if Shore and the Shining Night was a piece from college and you just brushed it up in the last week or so or two, I'd like to hear like the Ave because it's how you're singing now. But okay. like put your diva attitude into it, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what do you think, everybody? I'm fine with that. That's fine. Why not? Okay. As we say in South Philadelphia, the only thing to read.
Wonderful. Wow, thank you very much. You. Okay, that's a little bit different. Let's start in reverse. Let's start with Lisa, please. <laughs> okay, that was really, really beautiful. Wow. Thanks. Really nice. And I don't know if you're allowed to say this kind of thing anymore, but I think you look terrific. I think Thank I you. love your dress. I don't Thank know if that's allowed, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, okay. So as usual, I have nerdy diction things because I'm a nerdy diction coach. But uh, first of all, you, the sound was really lovely and you have a terrific aval. Wow. Good for you. Thank you. Um, my, my little criticisms are about, about other things in the diction. And it's, um, it, Latin does have double and single consonants, just like Italian. So just be careful that like the word Maria only has one R in it. And it kind of got a little, the, drove me a little nuts that you kept singing Maria. Sorry, I know that's really nerdy and diction nerdy, but it, it's really Maria with one R. And so that also goes forward like Ora, O-R-A. And then there's a two, there's two C's in Peccatoribu. So go ahead and double that. It's, it's perfectly okay to do a double consonant in Latin. As far as I know, if, if I'm wrong, somebody please, please feel free to correct me. But um, that's really all I have to say. I thought it was beautiful. Nice job. Thank you, Lisa. Okay, let's go to Sandra. Okay, very good. Uh, beautiful piece, and I love that in your voice. Um, a couple things I wanted to follow up with what um, Ms. Uh, Harer de Calvo just said, um, that on the, uh, on the Maria, uh, what's happening because you're rolling that, the single Italian or Latin R that is between two vowels is flipped, not rolled. Mm -hmm. If there's a consonant on either side of it, then it's rolled. But if, when it's right between, it has to be a double R to be rolled, like the word terra in Italian. But um, the Maria, um, and also you're taking that R on Maria up to the Ia part of it. You're saying Maria. And that R is closing down your E a little bit, okay? So, Maria, Maria. You want to, by the time you're up on the upper note of that, you want to be done with the R. You don't want it to influence the E apart, okay? So, Maria, instead of Maria, because that cuts off the E a little bit, okay? And also, um, it was the same thing on your word Eribus, because that again is between two vowels, the R. So we don't want to roll that one. We want to flip it and be done with that R as soon as you can. R's and L's are like L's especially, but R's too are big enemies of singers because it just, it cuts off the air supply. And then when you get to the upper notes, your voice has to be back to speed, but it can't be that quickly because the air supply has been somewhat limited and restricted by that consonant. But um, uh, other than those little criticisms, it sounded absolutely beautiful. And uh, in all honesty, I'd love to hear you sing again at some point. Thank you. Certainly. Okay, let's go to Helen, please. Hey. Um... Yes, just to build a little, everyone's telling you about the consonants, and I was going to talk about that too. Um, I think uh, a little bit of what uh, Herr Schneller <laughs> was, uh, was talking about with the Maria, I really heard, especially in the first and last Ave Maria, uh, the, the E vowel is a little under the pitch. It's, it's not that you're not trying to sing the correct pitch or you're not hearing the correct pitch, it's a production issue, mm -hmm. and it is partly the R. And it's also that I think just observing you, you're not making a round enough shape, making enough space for that E vowel inside your mouth. Um, so I would practice that whole piece just on an OO vowel and then go back and sing it with the correct vowels. Just feel how that OO vowel feels, that space feels on all those notes. Um, your legato is beautiful. Uh, I didn't have any issues with that. Um, it's a, and you sang it overall very, it's a very lovely sound, lovely tone. Um, so yeah, that was my main thing was, was wanting to hear more space in those E vowels. They're a little spread to my ear. Um, so that, that's my, my, really my only criticism of it. Lovely job. And uh, yeah, please keep singing. You have Thanks. a lovely voice. Thank you, Helen. Okay, Barbara, we're running a little bit out of time, so uh, unfortunately we're, uh, but please, let's continue. 
Okay, I'm just going to say everything that everyone has said already, and I loved it when you got still. Your body got a little more still, because this is a prayer and a song. And so um, I, I just thought it was beautiful. I think, yes, you should sing more Bellini and work your voice back in that way. Do bel canto, and it will, it will be a good friend for this time. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, yeah, I want to echo everyone else. Uh, uh, such a beautiful voice. Do not stop singing. A couple of things. One is, um, you have that nice, beautiful intro there that Hugh played for you, okay? Uh, I want you to get into the song before you sing. Uh, I think the other is prepare your breaths before. You're a little, you're a little late in preparation of taking that breath. And take that, take that vowel breath, if you will, um, I'd really like to see your support connected all the way from the sternum up to that beautiful line and your legato that you have. Again, I feel like we, we kind of dip down. So when you do that, you kind of squash your breath. And, and uh, what I like to see, you just keep the intercostals open, allow that, that real foundational beginning of that sound to start from the sternum area, and then really stay open like you're doing. Fabulous sound fabulous voice just want to really encourage you keep going after it okay thanks